talking about these dreams. And I just mentioned that sometimes life works in a way where those dreams don't always pan out the way you want them to. And I want to tell you that that's to be expected. My first point is that adversity is inevitable. But so are the promises of God. Yes, we're going to go through some things, but God is also working in the midst. We see Joseph in verse 37. We see that he is showing that God is giving him dreams. And he not only gives him a dream, he gives him a second dream to confirm that. So now we're seeing that he feels like God is doubling down, but people are telling him, no, Joseph, why are you dreaming that? No, Joseph, why are you saying these things? Are you speaking these things in hubris? Joseph is like, I didn't ask for these dreams. They just came to me. God did this. I'm saying what he told me to. But sometimes people don't go with that. On the flip side, sometimes God is not really speaking to you. Let me say that right now. I don't know whose feelings I just hurt, but sometimes it's not God. And I've had to say this to myself, don't think I'm just getting on you. But sometimes it's not God giving us the things of our heart. And the things of our heart only come from God when our heart is given to God. If there are other things seated on the throne of our heart, then God is not in control. So, Joseph is living through this and his, his brothers get upset with him. So much so that they plot to kill him. They plot to kill him, and what they decide to do after one brother, Reuben, speaks up, like, why would we do something so wicked? They decide, okay, you know what? We're just going to maul him. We're going to jump him, throw him on this cart, and sell him into slavery in Egypt. Just ship him off. We'll take his robe, that fancy robe that father only made for him. We'll rip it up, put some blood on it, take it to father, say, your son is dead. Now who's your favorite? <laughs> Adversity. I feel like sometimes I can relate to this. And this all happened to Joseph at 17. I remember being 17 and having dreams. Looking back, it wasn't the wisest at the time, but I had a dream. I went to Pastor Sherry and said, Pastor, I feel like I can lead the youth ministry. And I remember she looked at me so lovingly. And spiritually, I felt the pat on my head. And she was like, we'll see. That's all she said. We'll see. And I pleaded my case, and it was just, we'll see. And I felt in that moment like, she's not taking me seriously. I really have a dream like I could lead a youth ministry. Little did I know what it took to lead a youth ministry at that time. So I didn't know really what I was asking for. But I asked anyway. And while I felt like I was discouraged in the moment, she never continued to discourage me. I was just thinking that in my head because I wanted her answer to be yes, and it wasn't yes, but it was just not yet because look at me now. <laughs> and then once I'm finally in a position to lead, we have a youth night one time. I have this big dream that we're going to watch a movie called Courageous, and it's going to be this life-changing experience. It was really a good movie. For me, it was a good movie. I thought it really spoke to what it meant to be a man of God. And I, I, it wasn't a mistake, but I kind of slipped. And I was too passionate when I presented it to Bishop and some of the elders. And I know they didn't mean it, but it felt like adversity because they laughed at me. Bishop was like, what can you guarantee that this movie will do for me as a man? You are but 17. You don't have a wife. You don't have kids. How can you say for certain this movie will change my life? And I was adamant. I walked out. <sighs> Felt like I wanted to cry. And I probably did cry because I was so certain that I was onto something. I had a dream. And then we watched the movie, and Bishop's like, yeah, it's a good movie. But his message was still consistent. You don't know yet what it is that you dream, but there's going to be a time where you understand. And I feel like Joseph, in this season of being abandoned and rejected by his brothers, went through a season of, you'll understand. Because it was one thing for him at 17 to think, I will rule over my siblings and my father and mother, but he didn't have a full understanding of what that meant. He didn't have the full knowledge of what it took to get to a place where he could even think, have an image of what it meant to rule over. 
your brothers and your parents. That even sounds prideful when you think about it. So of course Jacob would be like, what is this that you mean? Of course his brothers would feel a type of way. Because what is it that you mean? No one had the full picture, but the full picture of God never comes at the beginning because if it did, you would never get to the full picture. It would be too easy for you. There's no faith in knowing what comes, but there's faith in allowing God to lead you to what's about to happen. So, yes, there are moments where you feel like your dreams are being downplayed. There's moments where you feel that there are words of discouragement, that you're abandoned by loved ones. But there is a reward that is waiting that we tend to lose sight of at times. And I know for myself, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I lose sight of it. Because while adversity and things that happen, and there are things that are happening that are way worse than what I just told you about when I was 17, life is full of different things. Life is full of you being rejected by your mother, her telling you that she didn't want you when you were born. Life is full of people at your workplace looking over you every time there is a a position that is opening up for you to be promoted. You're the most qualified, you're the most consistent, you're the most faithful, and they choose the person that has the least amount of character. There is something that is always going on. There's a relationship where you feel like you always get the short end of the stick. And no matter how much you put in and no matter how much you go to God, you still feel unfulfilled in this relationship. For the other person is not doing their part. We have dreams and they're always met with adversity. But like I said, while adversity is inevitable, the promises of God are also inevitable. We look throughout the the scriptures, we see Numbers 23, 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should change his mind. We see in Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word, God is saying, be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. We see in Isaiah 40 and 8, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Isaiah 54, 10, for the mountains may depart and the hills may be removed, but my steadfast love, says the Lord, shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed. We see 2 Timothy 2, 13, bear with me, if we are faithless, God remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God find their yes in him, that it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. The promises are there. The promise is in the word. And what it says is that our God is faithful. He is consistent through the ages. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He does not budge. The things that happen in our life do not face him. He is not sitting there concerned about what man is going to do because he has power over it all. 